Hi, I'm Emma Ebling, a Canva Certified Creative from Coffs Harbour, Australia. And today I'm going to show you how to create an animated Facebook post. Let's jump into Canva and check out how to do it. Finding ourselves on the Canva dashboard, we want to look for the Facebook post template. You can find it in the scrollable menu at the top or pop up to the search bar and type in Facebook post. Selecting the Facebook template gives us the exact dimensions we need for our artboard. Now we can come to the left hand side and select from any number of pre-existing templates. We can search those templates in the search bar, but you'll notice here each has a topic heading and we can select see all to see more under that topic heading. Or you can use the elements of text, photos, your own uploads and graphics, videos, etc searching for what you'd like in the menu bar to add to your artboard. I'm gonna start with one of the templates and I really like this one. I feel it has loads of potential to become interactive and I can show you a number of different techniques on how to animate things with Canva. I'm gonna show you three separate techniques in this video. The first that is under element animations. We select elements, we come to graphics, and we can type in what we're looking for. We have a button here, and I want a hand to click on that button. So I'm gonna type in hand. I can't see anything animated there. So I wanna come up to the toggles, select animated, and apply filters. This gives me only the ones with movement. Now I'm looking for something that is similar in color and design. I don't wanna use something like this because it feels out of place here. We have really rounded elements and this feels really pixelated. Scrolling down, I'm looking for something that has similar color. You know what, I like this one. It's nice and rounded. I can make it smaller by using these buttons or toggles on the side. And you'll notice anytime you add animation to an artboard, a timer pops up here, which shows you the length of that animation or the entire artboard animation. And you can play with that timing over here. So really simple, you can search for maybe click and find an arrow if that's something that you'd like to add instead of a hand. We can pop that there. So there are hundreds and hundreds of different animations that you can search for here. Next, technique number two, I wanna show you how to animate your artboard. Now we need to select the artboard, the word or button animate pops up here and watch what happens when I scroll over these different options. We have some really cool pro ones here too, Stomp being one of my favorites, along with Pop. And we can change the timing of this. We can make it a little bit longer. We want it to be five seconds and play. So we've got that little bit at the end, which is static before it reboots. And we can give that strong call to action to click on the button. Now, I might like to animate this text. I can select that, text animation appears, and I'm gonna use a typewriter because it gives that feeling that someone's actually typing it in as we give that call to action to click order now. And the phone, I think I'm gonna use burst here. I don't tend to like to use too many different options on a post because it can become too much, overwhelming for the viewer. We have to think about their user experience. They haven't interacted with this post before, so we wanna keep it nice and simple with those calls to action and animation that gives that visual story as to what's happening. So think about the user experience. Next technique I wanna show you is a slightly more advanced technique, but it really isn't because anything we do in Canva is really easy and really simple. The only reason it's advanced is that we just need to think a little bit about the end product and plan from there backwards. So what I wanna achieve is this motorbike man moving across the screen. So I'm gonna take out the arrow and I'm just, for this one, to keep it really simple, gonna take the animation off the artboard by selecting none. And you'll notice that the play button here disappeared. That's how I know that there isn't an option of animation on this post at this moment. But I still have the timer here. 
And this timer is really important because we wanna time each one of our slides. If you can't see the timer here, just add some animation to your artboard, remove it, and the timer will stay. And that's what we're looking for. So the way we do this is we duplicate our artboard, we rubber band the object, hold down Option or Alt on our keyboard and drag it to the left or right. Now we just wanna create a replica and delete the one behind. Now, to save yourself time, we can go through and do each of these slides. But before you do that, I want you to change the timing on the first one and bring it all the way down to 0.1 or 0.2 seconds. I'm gonna go with one. I'm gonna delete this one. And this means that we're saving ourselves time because the timing is already added to the artboard. Now, I can go back and move my motorbike man. Remembering to delete the one behind and continue on till I have him moved all the way across the screen. Next, we wanna check our slides. So we come down to the grid view and check that they're evenly spaced and Mr. Motorbike Man is moving across the screen. We wanna come up to downloads after that, select GIF and download our GIF. Once that's done, it shouldn't take a second. We can open up a new slide and I like to come over to uploads and just wait for my media to download, select upload, grab that GIF and add it to the screen. And I can see that my Mr. Motorbike Man is very active delivering food that you have ordered through the app. A couple of extra little quick things. I created this one a little earlier and I'm gonna upload that as well because I've got Mr. Motorbike Man going in both directions. And I did that by completing the exact same process, except when I made my slides, I doubled the amount. So once he'd finished on this slide, I created another 12 or so slides, except with the image flipped. So if I open up this one and I show you how to flip the image, except he'd be starting over here, I would complete the process by again, just moving him across the screen. And that way we can have this effect of multiple deliveries when we download our GIF. Once you start creating your own animated GIFs, it gets addictive. So I thought I'd show you two other quick ideas to help you start thinking creatively. This is a story post, they're identical. The only thing that's different is this buy now button block here. I download as a GIF, and I've already done that and uploaded it again. And you'll notice when we zoom in, this buy it now button disappears and comes back again. So it looks like it's really interactive. Another idea is this mobile phone. It ascends up the page with a cool little quote. And as you can see here, I have just created that by positioning the mobile phone slightly higher on each slide. Again, downloading it as a GIF and then uploading it back via the upload section. I can come to elements. On this post, I can add some extra little bits. I can search for a purple flower or here you can see I've previously searched for a purple star and I can now download this page as a video, but I wanna make sure that I'm selecting just that page and I can download that and add it to my Instagram as a really interactive post. That was a whole bunch of fun. Thanks for hanging out with me today. If you'd like to learn more about me or anything to do with brand marketing and design strategy, you can come to my website, thebrandmethod.com or check me out on socials at The Brand Method. So as always, empower others and always create with Canva. See you next time.